Yeah, well, the Ovens is one of the more interesting and more important rivers in Victoria. It flows uh, through the northeast of the state, drains the snow country around Mount Hotham, Mount Buffalo, uh, flows down the plains to enter the Murray uh, just above uh, Yarrawonga. And it's important in the context of the basin because it's the last river in the southern half of the basin that doesn't have major dams on it. So two of the tributaries have modest dams, but its flow is largely unregulated. So we're seeing a waterway with a lot of potential for restoring native fish. We've got one snapshot, or we had one snapshot of the Ovens River, a survey done in 1950 by researcher J.O. Langtry, uh, recorded the trout cod, Macquarie perch and Murray cod were present in uh, the Ovens River. And through a bit of oral history, I was able to find out that the survey was done uh, in the lower reaches around Peachelbar. And the Ovens is also important because there's a relic population of Macquarie perch in one of the tributaries, the Buffalo River. So we've got these little snapshots of the ovens and everybody knows it's important because it's unregulated. It's a place we could do something with native fish, but again, the story was what was there originally. A lot of it has come from oral history and some fantastic oral history. Uh, the first person was uh, Walter Grattage and I met him in Myrtleford, he was 95 years of age. And he recalled arriving there as a boy in the 1920s and not only were cod and brim common in the ovens, but they were common in the Rose White Creek, an anna branch that flows through Myrtleford. And he had some wonderful stories. So he was the oldest person I interviewed and he passed away shortly after the interview. So I was lucky to get that one. I wanted more history from uh, the upper ovens. The trail had gone cold, so to speak. Where could I find someone else? And I was in Wangaratta and uh, there was a bunch of taxi drivers talking in the street having smoko. And I started chatting to them, uh, saying what I was doing, would they know anybody? And they said, we know someone. And his name was Bert Carmody and he was 90 years old and he was in a retirement village. And so I rang the retirement village. This is all in the space of half an hour. Could I come chat to him? Oh, they, he'd love somebody to come talk to him. He could remember the last cod being caught in the bright area. And not only that, he uh, clearly knew about trout cod. He called them rot cod, gave great descriptions of them, uh, talked about them being almost in plague proportions in the top part of the ovens when he was a boy about them disappearing, Macquarie perch, catfish. Uh, so he was a brilliant interview. Another person that was interesting was uh, Wally Mitchell. He wasn't in the age group of the 90 year olds. Uh, he, his family settled on the Buffalo River about where Buffalo Dam is today. And he told the story of his father who was on the road building team at Abbey Yards at the top of the Buffalo River in the 1920s. And uh, they caught enough cod in the upper Buffalo River to feed 180 men. Two old uh, friends, uh, Don Burrows and Max Suffield, um, were interesting interviews. The Burrows family had the last property on the top of the King River, uh, where William Hovell Dam is. And Don talked about his family stories about the family living off cod and perch there. Uh, by the time he was a young boy, the cod were gone. He can only ever remember one being cod. So, But up till about the time of World War I, cod and perch were common there. And Max was the same. He talked about stories about the settlers catching them in something called the gun hole and the bog hole, which was sort of 10 or 15 miles above William Hovel Dam. An interesting story uh, it talks about is uh, uh, they thought trout cod were just the female uh, version of Murray cod, and they called them rock cod. And they said they was always curious why there were so many female cod in the King River. In fact, they were the trout cod, a different species.
When we moved to Gapstead in 51, the fishing had changed. It was still good for cod, less of them, but big ones. The rock cod were still common, though not as common, and the brim by them were a bit unusual, but it was still good fishing. I caught a 112-pound cod at the Pioneer Bridge at Everton back in the early 50s and plenty of 60 to 70 pounders. The big cod we'd get on the silver carp and the red carp. We'd drag them out of the lagoons, not the mongrel carp you'd get now. The 1939 fires killed a lot of cod, nearly killed all of them. I can remember the cod floating down the river, big white bellies. The largest cod that I caught was 30 pounds. Nearly all the fish caught was with a single propeller spinner with white feathers over triple hooks. Although I never caught them, there were brim all the way up the buffalo. Wally Mitchell told me how he used to be able to catch a brim any time after the cows crossed the river. That stirred them up. The cod in the ovens, they went up to at least Myrtleford. There was plenty of them up that far. My best cod out of the ovens was 90 pound. It was taken by angling on a barty grub. When I was young, there was plenty of them. Plenty of big ones. We used to set lots of night lines back then. That's how we got them. Back then, you hardly saw anyone on the river. Not like today, there are boats everywhere. I had the first motorboat. Had it out at Bundalong. About 1969, I saw cod floating in the lake, dying and blown up, but not dead. Floating to the top upside down. The theory was that the trout cod hadn't been able to spawn for a few years and it killed them. They were still alive when we dragged them out many of them 25 to 30 pounders at least. We must have dragged about 40 out of the water and hung them up in the trees. There were dozens and dozens of them. The final pieces in the story of the Ovens River are some old newspaper articles. And okay, I had oral history that cod had been common at Bright in the Ovens River. And then I found newspaper articles about uh, a creek running through uh, Bright, that they were catching cod in the creek behind the pub. So the cod weren't just in the large rivers, they were in some of the, the larger creeks as well. So cod, Macquarie Perch, they certainly went you know, basically up to the Harriet, Harrietville area. Uh, there's an article about catfish being in lagoons near Bright in 1908. Uh, so a lot of history was collected on this catchment and we've been able to reconstruct fairly well what was there in the early days. <laughs>